now we have Kaizen talking about these. <laughs> so hi, my name is Kaizen. Uh, I'm from uh, the SoVisual universe. I work at Finium. So this talk is sponsored by SoVisual and those guys, I was like forced to say this or I uh, wouldn't have a ride back to Braga. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so this uh, trip starts like uh, some months ago when my boss told me uh, for your last project uh, in your master's degree, I want you to build a platform to monitor bees and uh, support crowdfunding. And as you know, bees are our friends, but they are dying. And this means that we may be on the verge of extinction too, because the bees, uh, if you don't know, they make uh, like 80% of our food for us because pollinization and honey and so uh, royal wax and all that stuff goes like into medication, uh, cosmetics, all this stuff that you don't even realize until you start reading about it. So to be a keeper, you have like a, a hive and a, a grouping of hives is like a apiary. And when we started to look at the problem, we thought, okay, if maybe we can get like an Arduino with some sensors, it would be easy. We can get like temperature, uh, noise, humidity. It seems all right, okay? And we imagine like an architecture with uh, a sensor in each hive and like a router of some sort. And this router would talk to a thing that talk to a thing that records data and this thing produces like values, statistics, and some kind of prediction with ML. All this great stuff, okay? So, uh, just so you know, we have like, I don't know, four months to do this. And we, we needed to buy all the, the equipment. It had to be shipped from China. Uh, we, were, we, were, we didn't think right, okay? <laughs> so this is gonna be a talk about the stuff you don't do. <laughs> So let's start on the part of the, the hives, okay? Um, we noticed and talked to some um, professors at the university and we found out that some, ra uh, some radio waves cause problems with bees. Though we found out that a system called LoRa, has someone worked with LoRa here? No. So this is like a radio system with like five kilometers of range uh, and it doesn't really hurt the bees. So it, it should be perfect. But um, we bought like this kind of Arduinos with the sensors in it. And our idea was a LoRa router costs like 200 euros. With this 20 pound sensor, we're gonna build a, a gateway, a router, and the, the transmitter. So, uh, from here, it, it doesn't seem like a good idea, okay? Because, like, uh, these kind of sensors have like 32 ki uh, kilobytes of memory. Uh, we had like a lengthy authentication process to uh, peer discovery of the sensors and the authentication to be kind of simple to the user. And we needed to code this all in C++. <laughs> and the only person in a group of five that really knew C++ and couldn't really work on this at full time was me. <laughs> so uh, it didn't work well, okay? Um, it kind of burned. And we started to think, okay, we can't use like an Arduino because we don't know how to fucking work this. So let's take the, this thing that we gave the front-end developers to test that simulated like a network, the router and the sensors individually. And we are gonna take it. Uh, and by the way, this was made 
with Elixir, all of it. But we are from Braga.js, so no Elixir today. We're going to talk about JS. But wait, let's talk about a thing that we saw before thinking, okay, let's abandon the Arduino. So we thought maybe we could run Elixir on an Arduino. And there's a project that does it, okay? It's called Atom VM. But there's a really big problem with that, that it doesn't support maps. And if you programmed Elixir or Erlang, you know that maps are everything. <laughs> You can't really do something useful without maps. Uh, so we thought, okay, we have like a Raspberry Pi. We have the thing that kind of simulates the sensors. Why don't, you, why don't we take this thing that simulates the sensors, take out the sensor part? We have like an, a Raspberry Pi and we can talk with Arduino to the Raspberry Pi with serial protocol. So uh, there's a thing in Elixir called, called NERFs that can program um, like uh, Raspberry Pis, Beagle Bones, etc. So, um, and this is called circuits. So we took our hammer, our engineer hammer, right? And we built a fucking driver in Elixir <laughs> to talk with the Arduino. So the Arduino takes the LoRa waves, uh, processes, sends it by serial protocol, and the uh, Raspberry Pi kind of takes it, parses it, and uh, sends it to uh, our broker. And as you can think about it, this is not <laughs> really a good idea. It has a lot of problems. It was really tricky to do. I think it was even trickier than to program the whole Arduino and all thing at the end. And it wasn't really a good idea. Don't do it, <laughs> really. So let's talk about the communication to the our like mining IoT. Uh, manager thing. So we discovered this protocol called MQTT. I don't know if you know this, someone? Yeah? Okay. So this is used for a lot of, a lot of stuff, like the <coughs> Facebook Messenger uses it underneath. A lot of IoT protocols are based on it. So it's like a broker system that uh, is you can subscribe to channels and publish in channels, okay? And we tried other stuff like Rabbit and ZeroMQ that don't need brokers, but this seems right, okay? So like a sensor uh, uh, published to a channel, you can subscribe to that channel. It's, it's simple, okay? So the, the way it worked was the gateway published to the broker, all the sensors, and our platform read with a pattern matching type of architecture uh, the message from each gateway. And in JS, to follow tradition, is something like this. But it's a little hammered <coughs> down because it was in Elixir and now it's in JS. <laughs> So the last part, we needed to talk to our like business logic platform and uh, give all the current values and the statistics and etc. So you use Redis for that. And you know the drill, it's okay, but kind of doesn't work for us because we didn't have time and this was the requirements that we had when we started dealing with Redis. But at the end of the day, it was kind of like this because the front end didn't have time to implement all the web sockets and real time stuff. So we kind of had the active sensors only and the less readings. It was okay, uh, but not good enough. But okay, for a demo. So the statistics part, 
we had statistics that worked, thankfully, but there was no ML. But wait, don't worry. <laughs> so we take the statistics, we tell the investors that it's ML and it's ML, right? This is how it works. <laughs> so this is our story. <laughs> If you want, I have the sensors and all the IoT stuff in my bag, I can show you. Uh, I can show it working, uh, really. And thank you. <laughs> what happened with the bees? The bees are dying. <laughs> but uh, in the next months, if you check the uh, uh, happy bees mm -hmm. with uh, I instead of a Y, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna see some news. Mm -hmm. What were you measuring on the on the pitch high? Temperature? Uh, temperature, noise, humidity, um, <coughs> accelerometer, like velocity, because uh, uh, stealing hives is like a big thing in Portugal apparently. So if a hive is moving, it's Probably be stolen. <laughs> what about the bees which are not in the place? What, what? What about the bees which are in nature, existing already? And yeah. You don't even know how many bees are already existing, which are not in the world. Uh, that's really not our case study. <laughs> no, but you, you talk about bees. Right? Yeah, yeah, but this is like um, beekeepers and uh, this kind of stuff, like uh, men. Handled bees. Do you have a lot of beekeepers working in the uh, We have some. Uh, actually, the my boss's father is a beekeeper, so that's where it started. Okay. That's all. Any more questions? Yeah. Did you use the ESP32? Yes. Or? Yes. So that is what is sending the Raspberry Pi yeah. with the RAM? Yeah, and it's also the sensor that is sending from the the B, uh, the beehive, to say. I mean, the, the sensors are connected to, to the, the ESP, ESP yeah. They send sending LoRa to a Raspberry Pi? Uh, they are sending to another ESP that is sending by <coughs> serial to the Raspberry Pi. Ah. So you connected the ESP35 wire to, yeah. <laughs> to another thing that is wired to the Raspberry Pi? No, the DSP is connected by USB and that through uh, the serial protocol we can read the results. So ESP32 to uh, XB? Uh, the ESP sent by Laura to another ESP that is connected to a Raspberry Pi that sent it to a broker. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the part that was hard or not working very well is the ESP32 or? Uh, the ESP32 on the uh, receiver side. Uh, uh, it kind of didn't work at first and it just gave up. <laughs> <coughs> Any more questions? So, thank you.